This is True Facts with John Lieberman, CyberStationUSA.com. And now another case of yet another missing woman. Heather Riggio went missing. She was 20 years old. She went missing May 6th of 2007 in Florida. And her aunt, Darlene Rocaplot, is with me now. Uh, thanks for your time tonight, Darlene. Oh, you're welcome, John. Tell me a little bit about... Uh, this young lady? Um, she was a very outgoing young lady. This is my niece. She was very trusting. She trusted too much. She, um, I guess you could say she sought out attention from men because of the lack of attention she got from her father, I guess. And um, she had met a gentleman, I'm not even going to call him a gentleman. He, she met someone that she gave him a name as Sugar Daddy. He was the last one that she was seen with. He picked her up from her uncle's home in North Miami Beach and called maybe, this was on, I believe it was May 7th, May 6th, and she called a day later and said that um, he had found her a place to live and he was going to get her a job. And that was the last anyone heard from her. She always kept in touch with her grandmother. She was one to call constantly. She would call her grandmother 20 times a day. And she, she failed to call. And then when it got up to Mother's Day and she didn't call her grandmother, we knew something was wrong. And that's when we filed a missing persons report. The case is with North Miami Beach Police. And I don't know, I guess I have a lot of anger in me. And... I guess I'm going to say that they're not doing their job. Well, I, I know that they investigated it, you know, in the beginning, but I guess there were no, you know, there were no good leads. Is that what the family was told? That's what we were told. Um, I spoke, matter of fact, I emailed the officer just the other day, and, you know, he's telling me that he's working the case still, and he's trying to get it with the FBI, and the FBI, for whatever reason, won't take it. Well, here's the thing. Whatever became of the the guy who last saw Heather, uh, what do we know? Whatever happened with him? Yes, he was questionably once, and then what do you call it? They lawyer up, and he was no no. He wasn't questioned anymore. His family. He's got a son that Heather was seen with. Um, he's got a daughter. A matter of fact. That was where he got her a place to live. And she said that Heather left her home to go down the street to use a telephone, which is kind of suspicious because she lives in a rural area and it's all farmlands. There's no, far there's no telephones anywhere around there. Well, here's the thing. I mean, how long had she known this guy for, do we know? We don't know. I'm going to say she only knew him a couple of months because her grandmother, I, I'm in Tallahassee, and her grandmother was up here visiting me, and Heather called one day and um, told her grandmother that she and, quote, Sugar Daddy was going to, they were going to key, the keys. He was taking her down to the keys for an ID, some kind of driver's license or some kind of form of identification which sounds awful suspicious to me. And um, that's, I, I think, only about two months. And no one has physically met him. What's, what's the hardest part about all of this on the family? Not knowing. Not knowing what happened to her. Not knowing if, if she is alive, if she needs us. You know, we don't, we don't know, you know, is she dead? Was she a victim of human trafficking? You know, or even is she in jail somewhere and somebody just doesn't know? Well, that's one thing that concerns me. Obviously, the, the human trafficking, sex trafficking rings uh, down there have, uh, have increased a lot. She would be 
kind of a grade A target for them because she wants the attention, uh, and you know, and so that's what concerns me, you know, as well. Um, Absolutely. I mean, she was a young girl, beautiful girl, blonde hair, blue eyes. And, you know, she didn't have the best life. She was in custody of her grandmother because her mother got killed when she was, let's see, her mother was 27, and which made Heather 10. And Heather and her sister then became custody of the grandmother, my sister. So her, her mother was the victim of a murder? No, um, she died in a motorcycle accident when she was 27. So she loses her mother when she's just 10. That was... That was first bad kind of happening to her and then what happened well then her father wasn't the best person and he i believe was incarcerated in 2003 which he really had no dealings with heather any positive dealings let me put it that way he was not a positive figure and uh, he was incarcerated i believe in 03 and he just got out last month and so you know, Heather, she's had it kind of rough. As the days go by, what, you know, I know you guys are, are fighting for answers here. Uh, tell me a little bit about what the family's done and, and you know, if, if has the family gotten in any leads? We have gotten hardly any. I will tell you that um, Heather was supposedly to have gone to a concert with someone, um, actually with this sugar daddy with his daughter. And um, at that concert, she met some guys and they exchanged numbers. This is what we were told. Well, I have a Facebook, and there's a guy that came on Facebook because I, I um, communicate with Q for missing people. And he contacted Q, and he was very arrogant and very mean. So I got his name. And I called North Miami Beach Police, and the officer there said he contacted this young man, and supposedly this guy was the guy that Heather met at the concert. And he had already been questioned, and so that ended that lead. So other than that, you know, there's been sightings, they say, but, you know, they never come through. They're, they're nothing. And I have contacted everyone. Um, uh, what is that? Missing person. One eight hundred missing. Yes, Center for Missing. Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Yes, all the. I know she's up there. Yeah, all of them. Even um, Nancy Grace. She puts like a flyer out on her show every now and then on Heather. Right, I know. I saw that. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Uh, somebody has to know something about you know, about what happened to her. What would it mean uh, to get that phone call that somebody had either, you know, seen her alive or, or knows something about what happened to her? Oh, that, that would be great. <laughs> it would be a load lifted off all, our, all of our shoulders. You know, Heather's grandmother is not in good health. And, you know, and this has really taken her down along with the rest of us. What What is it like day to day to have a loved one where you, you just simply don't know? Well, there's not a day that goes by that you don't think of her, you know, and wonder what happened to her. You know, did she need your help or could, you know, she couldn't call out or, you know, you're, you're thinking about everything, every angle. And you're thinking about everything about her, you know. I mean, I walk down the street and see people. I'll see a young lady and I'll think, oh. That looks like Heather. You know, it's just my mind playing tricks. But, you know, it's wishful thinking. But we would give anything, anything to have something, you know, to have someone call and say, we've seen her or we have found her or whatever. Just some closure. So tell me where the public can go, what they can do at this point to, to help. Just put the word out. And the public, if they see her or know of anyone who has seen her, you know, if they could call or put it online or anything. And she went by the nickname Kitty, right? Yes, she did. 
and I, I understand she had a couple tattoos and uh, because these could be identifying factors. I guess she had a pink pinup girl on her leg. A Marilyn, I believe it was Marilyn Monroe. I'm not 100% sure. On her calf of her leg, she had a nautical star on her back, on the small of her back. She had some piercings. Um, from what I understand from people that she had gotten another tattoo and where that is i don't know okay we should point out there is a reward uh, out there law enforcement has put i believe a thirty five hundred dollar reward for information leading to some sort of resolution in heather reggio's case yes because they are extremely worried about uh, about Heather, they do believe that she met with some sort of foul play, and somebody out there has to have some bit of information about what happened uh, to this young lady. They just they just have to. So, please, if you know anything, go to our website, cyberstationlive.com backslash John Lieberman. Give us some information. It can be anonymous. You know, go to Darlene's Facebook page. Uh, again, because, you know, this family needs some answers about what happened um, to this 20-year-old uh, who they love so much. Most definitely. Some answers need, you know, we need the answers. Darlene, thank you so much for your time. We will continue to follow this. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family. And, uh, again, we, uh, we just hope that, uh, that some, some good leads come in uh, to tell the family where, where Heather is. And just to remind the audience again, she disappeared on May 6th, 2007 uh, in North Miami Beach. And uh, police absolutely believe she's in danger. They believe she's probably still in the South Florida area, or, or at least was initially. Uh, so please look at the photos of this pretty young girl and, uh, and help a family get some justice. I thank you very much, John. Thank you, Darlene, and we will talk to you again soon. Thank you. This is True Facts with John Lieberman, CyberStationUSA.com. We'll be right back.